Hey, welcome back. I say welcome back because maybe you're someone who has been watching me on Facebook or listening to my podcast or um, you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and I just uh, really appreciate you and I'm, I'm excited to be able to come every week and share some insight and inspiration with uh, teachers around the world. And uh, if you don't know who I am and you're new to the things that I'm doing, I'm Amanda. I have a website called amandarightnow.com and you can find all sorts of resources uh, if you want to implement workshop, reading and writing workshop are my passions and I could go into why I'm so passionate about reading and writing workshop and how that came to be. Um, but instead, I'm just going to go straight into the topic today because it's really, really important. And I, I don't. I mean, for a long, long time, I feel like I neglected this. And so that's why I want to talk about it today, because I've realized more and more year after year um, how important this is and how we as teachers um, don't really realize how important this is. And you're probably like, what, what, what is this one crucial thing that I'm not doing when I'm planning my units? Um, and I'm going to tell you, I promise, uh, in just a few moments. But first, uh, I just, I want to talk about just planning a unit in general and just give you a behind the scenes look at what I do when I plan units for uh, teachers that are in my workshop teacher membership program. And so, first of all, what I do is I look at the standards. I know that sounds like really you look at the standards. Yes, I look at the standards and I common core standards and Texas essential knowledge standards, TEKS. I look at them and I um, think about, okay, well, what do I want students to get out of this unit? Um, and I, I love backwards design and trying to figure out like, well, what do I want students to be able to do at the end of the unit? Uh, and I use Google Docs a lot for planning, and I just recently started using Google Docs. I love Google Docs because you can insert links and it lives forever. So I can use it year after year after year. Google Docs is amazing, and I can show you inside of that in just a moment. Um, and I do an overview of the entire unit at, with all sorts of links and uh, handouts that are Google Slides. I use uh, Google Slides for choice boards uh, that I show students during the units to kind of show them what they must do and what they may do once they finish the must do's. Uh, and so I do all of these things to plan um, specifically a writing unit, but I also try to incorporate reading and writing into my units and show students just how closely tied together they are and uh, reading and analyzing the type of writing we're about to do uh, is so important in a unit. Uh, so I, I don't like to call it a writing unit or a reading unit because they are so, so embedded reading and writing. The only way that we can become better writers and learn uh, how to improve as, as writers is by reading, reading mentor text. And so I feel like mentor texts are the bridge between reading and writing in a unit. Okay, so, but what's the one thing that you need to do before anything else, before even looking at standards? Are you ready for it? <laughs> it's pre-assessing, finding out what can your students do without any help from you or without, with like a tiny bit of help. What can students do in one period when it comes to this type of writing? And then skimming those pre-assessments to find out like, okay, what, what are my students already doing without any help from me? What are the majority of my students lacking? And then I use that to plan my lessons. So the pre-assessments are so key. So I'm gonna focus um, the rest of this uh, episode on how to design a pre-assessment and how to use it because throughout my career as a teacher, one thing that has always just so bothered me um, about assessments is that you give it and then you move on. And I hate that. I don't like that. I've, it's always bothered me. I've always felt like, okay, we just gave this assessment and yes, assessments are great learning experiences for students. 
um, but they're also very stressful for students and they're stressful for teachers to grade and then you attach this number to it and then you move on. And I, I don't like that. I feel like assessments should inform our instruction and really summative assessments at the end of a unit they don't really inform your instruction if you're moving on to the next unit after the summative assessment. Do you know what I mean? So the way that I feel like uh, we can really use assessments to inform our instruction is through pre-assessments by assessing our students at the beginning of the unit before teaching anything else and then using that throughout the unit um, to figure out, okay, what, what, who am I going to help who, and making piles of students like these students, these are super strong writers and making piles of students who just seem like they've got this argument. I'm talking about argument writing because that's the unit I'm planning right now. It comes out January 1st for anyone who's a member of my program and you can get on the wait list to become a member. I'll put a link um, below, but uh, so because right now it's closed, but you can become a member um, and I'll email you when it opens up again. But the argumentative unit for sixth through eighth grade teachers comes out January 1st. And so I'm in the middle of writing that and planning it. And I, I, I wake up at 4 a.m. every day and I'm just writing and just writing my ideal unit, the unit that I just can't wait to teach. Um, so, okay, where was I? I'm getting way off topic. <laughs> So I just, I think, um, but also when I write a unit, I want teachers to realize that they need to pick and choose the lessons their students need. And, and what do, what do you notice most students need? So then you put a, make a pile of papers of students who are kind of mediocre, right? Like mediocre argumentative writers. And then you make a pile of students who are just like, wow, they only wrote a sentence or they only wrote a paragraph. They have no clue. Um, how to do this. And so you make a pile of those students. And so you have, you know, you've already grouped your students um, and you figured out which students need the most support from you during conferring time when you're conferencing with students. Um, okay, so let me show you what I have. I'm actually gonna show you my screen um, and just show you what I have so far for this argumentative um, unit. Uh, so I do it all, like I said, in Google Drive. Um, and I have all the curriculum right here in Google Drive. Um, and so basically what I do here is, um, oops, okay. Oh, there we go. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, there we go. Okay, so like I said, I use Google Docs or uh, Google Drive and I make all these Google Docs. So here is what I'm planning for the argumentative unit. This is a pre-assessment. Um, that I would give my students. Okay, so pre-assessment directions. Today, this is what you would give students. Today you will show me all you know about argumentative writing. What's the topic? And this links to an article that I want students to read that actually has multiple viewpoints about cell phones in schools. And then I give them very clear directions. Read the above article carefully, thinking about where you stand on the issue of cell phones in schools. Plan your argument by writing a claim statement and providing three reasons to support your statement. Search for the best quotes to support your claim from the article. Draft your argument. Don't forget to wrap up your argumentative paper with a conclusion that restates your claim and includes a call to action um, by your readers or for your readers. So uh, I also tell students uh, that it's okay for them to struggle. I haven't taught them anything yet. So I say, don't worry. If you really struggle with this type of writing, it is okay. My job is to support you and help you improve during our argumentative unit. How can I get an A plus on this pre-assessment? So how are pre-assessments graded? This pre-assessment is graded on completion. That means that all you have to do is try to get an A plus. Trying means you write slash type if you want students to. I prefer typing for pre-assessments because you're only having them do it in one period and so they can type faster than they can handwrite for at least 20 minutes without stopping. What if I don't finish? If possible, I'd love if you could finish your argumentative writing in class, but you might run out of time and that is okay too. During the unit, you could choose to use this piece and revise it as I teach you argumentative writing techniques. I also think it's important in uh, pre-assessments to define 
terms for students. So what is a claim? What is a topic sentence? What is evidence and what is reasoning? Um, and just, you know, providing them with the kind of bare bones of this type of writing and what you're expecting. So this is an example of a pre-assessment that you could give for argumentative writing. And so after, and oh, and okay, so here's the other thing. Let me uh, stop sharing my screen real quick. So while students are um, writing, you have a clipboard and I love this. So you have a clipboard and you kind of list some things. You have your students' names on one side and you list different things you notice students doing, like a lot of students during the pre-assessment. If you notice, um, you know, a lot of students have a lot of questions. You might write some of their questions down. Try not to answer them too much because you don't want to give too much support during the pre-assessment. So I, a lot of times I'll say, just do what you think is right because you, you're observing students and how they might do on a state test. Um, and, and part of our standards is students having students write for short periods and long periods of time. That's in the Common Core. Um, so this is a, an example of a short, shorter period uh, writing assignment. And so uh, I might write something on the top of my clipboard like wrote very little, um, sat without writing for a very long time, uh, unclear claim. You might uh, like lean over some students um, writing. I mean, you're not going to have time to look at everyone's claim. You could have students write their claim on a note card. Um, before they leave. So at, they write their draft and you have them write their claim on a note card and you can flip through those and see what students did with those. Um, and with the beauty of this is that the students are planning for you. You're getting the lesson ideas from your students, which is so powerful. Um, so you notice like a lot of students, their claim makes no sense or they don't even know what a claim is or maybe they're not really elaborating very much on their claim because I find that, you know, students will say one opinion, but they won't really like provide reasoning within the claim, um, which really sets them up to write a, a whole essay if they can incorporate like three reasons in one sentence along with their opinion. Um, I think that's really powerful because each of the reasons can be each of their supporting paragraphs. So I like to teach students the structure um, of an argumentative essay that way, you know, like using the reasons within their claim statement. Um, you know, maybe some, you notice some students aren't using any paragraphs. It's just like this giant block of words. So you could have that on your clipboard and you just put a check mark next to the kids that seem to be showing these types of um, behaviors during the pre-assessment activity. Maybe some students refused to write. Maybe some students only wrote for 10 minutes and then stopped and turned it in and said they were done. Keep track of all of that on a clipboard. And the thing is, is like I've been doing this for so long that every year I notice these patterns over and over and over again. So everything that I'm talking about are things that I've noticed in my community of students um, the issues that my students have, but you're in a different community. Your students might have other issues. Um, they might have issues with write, reading the article and understanding the article that's part of the pre-assessment um, and trying to figure out like what their, what, how, what their opinion is. So you might write that on the clipboard. These kids could not form an opinion about this topic. Like that's a big deal. We need to teach this. Um, and so just pre-assessments are just such a wonderful way to plan lessons and to um, not rely so much on your curriculum manual or your pre-made lessons that you bought on Teachers Pay Teachers or that you got from me in my membership program, but rely on your students to inform what you teach. Um, and so that is pretty much all that I have for you today. I hope that this was helpful. Um, and oh, one more thing. Let me just show you my unit at a glance just to show you how I use um, Google Docs to plan. And I've showed people this before, but maybe you're new to um, me and this is the first time you've ever watched a video by me. But um, so I use this kind of uh, format. So this actually, this does not include all the argumentative uh, skills. This is actually a whole class novel um, 
uh, unit at a glance, but I just copy it and then I type in what students are going to do in the art in the new unit. So this will all be deleted and um, I'll type in the evidence, you know, what 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 evidence is going to show me that students can do these things. Um, learning experiences, what are students going to do during this unit to be able to um, practice what I want them to get out of the unit. Uh, and then, so I have something like this. So it's a calendar. So what are we gonna do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? So mini lesson topic. And it's usually, you know, something involving reading a mentor text and analyzing it for the cu first couple of lessons. And then the next lessons are, you know, what did I notice students desperately needed in the pre-assessment? Pre and so this is how I love to use Google Docs to plan. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Mini lesson, goal, materials, work time choices, and closure. And the work time choices are always usually um, referring to a choice board, a list of choices that students have during the work time portion of workshop. And this is when I would um, confer with students and meet with students and roam around the room and have conversations with students. Okay. I hope this was super helpful and uh, if it was, feel free to comment. I love hearing from you, ask questions, share um, anything you do uh, to plan that might be helpful for other teachers. Um, what tools do you use to plan? And, um, and yeah, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye.